Adam, 2008 was a problem because of too much debt. Look out the window. Since 2008, the debt has skyrocketed everywhere. Even China has a lot of debt now. So all I'm saying is, and I don't know when it's coming, that the next time it's going to be a nasty, horrible, disastrous bear market. Inflation, you know, markets will go like this. They go up, they correct, they go up, they correct. That's been happening with inflation. Inflation has been correcting, as all markets do. I would suspect, though, that by this time next year, inflation will have reared its ugly head, even to the public. In a recent interview, James Rogers, renowned international investor and financial commentator, outlined his perspective on the upcoming market correction, anticipating it to be the most severe in his lifetime. While the U.S. dollar remains the dominant international reserve currency, its shares plunged from 70% at the start of the millennium, constituting more than a 10% decrease in two decades. The euro comes in second at a sloping 19.6%. However, the Japanese yen showed a 0.2 increase over the previous quarter, from 5.3% to 5.5%. The International Monetary Fund revealed that in the third quarter of 2023, the U.S. dollar share in the global central bank reserves sunk to 59.2% amid efforts to de-dollarize the global financial economy. Jim Rogers notes that the U.S. dollar, formerly the global mainstay, is transforming. Growing awareness of escalating U.S. debt is the catalyst behind this shift. Some major emerging economies are dabbling in trading commodities without using the dollar as they seek to reduce their reliance on the U.S. currency. Faced with U.S. sanctions and other restrictions, Russia and Iran, in particular, have stepped up oil sales in alternative currencies and found buyers in China, India, and elsewhere happy to buy these exports, often at lower prices. Natasha Kaneva, head of global commodity strategy at JP Morgan Chase, estimated that the proportion of the world's oil bought and sold in other currencies has risen to about 20%. During the interview, Rogers highlights the case of the British pound, once the dominant reserve currency until Britain faced economic turmoil and eventual bankruptcy 50 years later. He admits uncertainty about the next viable currency to move into, paralleling the situation when people shifted from the British pound to the US dollar in the past. Now, let's delve deeper into the video to explore further. Before we dive in, take a moment to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. Unfortunately, uh, not unfortunately, the, the U.S. dollar is the world's main currency. Now, unfortunately, that's beginning to change because more and more people are starting to see that the U.S. debt goes skyrocketing. And, you know, in Washington, Adam, if you have the world's reserve currency, it's supposed to be neutral. Anybody can use it for anything. But unfortunately, Washington is now changing those rules. If Washington gets angry at you, they cut you off. You know, they say you cannot use the U.S. dollar. Well, many people, including our friends, are starting to say, wait, 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 wait. This is serious. It could happen to us. It could happen to anybody. And so many people are now, because of Washington, are starting to accelerate to look for something else to compete with the dollar, including me. I'm looking to... I don't see anything on the horizon yet should be the Chinese currency, but it's a blocked currency, so it cannot be the Chinese renminbi. And I don't know. I own a lot of U.S. dollars, and I own them because I know that in turmoil, people look for a safe haven, and they will think the U.S. dollar is a safe haven. But as I just said, that's coming to an end. So now I am, I and others are accelerating the search for what do we do next? What do we use if we cannot use dollars? Well, what has happened in the, well, the last reserve currency was the British pound. You know, in 1923, the British pound was, it was it. There was no, there was no competitor. There was no number two. 50 years later, 1976 to be exact, Britain went bankrupt. IMF had to fly into Heathrow and pay their bills. It was that serious. That is a is the currency that went from number one to 50 years later bankrupt. That's what happened. And during that period of time, you know, it was miserable in, in Britain. You had you couldn't take money out of the country. You could take only a little bit if you went on a foreign trip. You know, with the value of the currency went down almost every week. There were serious exchange controls. There were high debts, high interest rates. Britain was a disaster. 
Now, Adam, there were always people who did well in Britain. Even I mean, the Beatles didn't leave. The Beatles stayed and made a lot of money. <laughs> but most people who were in Britain in those 50 years did not have a good time. That is what's always happened in current countries and currencies which go through this. Am I looking forward to it? No, but I'm just saying what has happened in the past, and I don't see how we, we the U.S., can avoid that. Maybe you have an answer. And people will, in those days, moved from the British pound to the U.S. dollar. My problem is I don't know where to move, which currency to move to now, because I don't see another one. Rogers expressed skepticism about the current chairman, stating that Powell isn't among the few commendable central bankers in American history. In 2024, leading central banks are anticipated to initiate interest rate cuts due to declining inflation, aligning with predictions from investors and economists who believe price levels are being managed effectively. At the start of 2023, the Federal Reserve, European Central Bank, and Bank of England were actively raising interest rates. However, they paused their tightening measures later in the year. In December, the Federal Reserve declared that interest rates would persist at 5.25% to 5.50%, up from the previous year's 4%. Similarly, the Bank of England and the European Central Bank confirmed they would maintain their current interest rates. Rogers expressed concerns about the unprecedented levels of money printing globally, especially by entities like the U.S. Federal Reserve and the Bank of Japan, expressing concerns about the persistence of inflationary pressures. Let's redirect our attention to a video. In America, we, we've had three central banks in American history. The first two disappeared for many reasons. Uh, this one's going to disappear too someday because they keep making so many mistakes. But we haven't had, I can only think of a couple of good central bankers in our history, in our instance, uh, 1913. Uh, and Powell's not one of them. He's not on my list of, of a good central banker. So I have learned you have to listen to them because they have influence. But I have learned they don't know what they're doing. So don't think that they know what they're doing and what they say is accurate. It's not. Now, the problem is you have to figure out what's accurate then. <laughs> you know, since they're not right and we can't just take their word for it. We have to figure out what's going to happen. I my suspect, but it's only I, it's only a suspicion, is that inflation. You know, markets will go like this: they go up, they correct; they go up, they correct. That's been happening with inflation. Inflation has been correcting, as all markets do. I would suspect, though, that by this time next year, inflation will have reared its ugly head, even to the public, and we will all be wondering what do we do now and that interest rates will be going higher again. Uh, I hope Mr. Powell can cut rates, and I hope he's smart enough to do it, if it's if that's appropriate. But I don't have much confidence. You know, Adam, so much money has been printed in the last few years. I mean, just unbelievable amounts of money. And not just in the U.S., although we led the way, but the Bank of Japan I mean, it's unbelievable. A guy goes to work every day like a good Japanese bureaucrat, goes early, cranks up the printing presses, and prints money as fast as he can. The amount of money being printed in Japan is unbelievable. It's unbelievable in America, too. Has been, anyway. But that's happening all over the world now. So I am worried that inflation has not gone away for good. Not just the U.S., but especially the U.S. has been unbelievable amounts of money, borrowed unbelievable amounts and spent unbelievable. I just mentioned Japan before. I mean, Japan's got a huge economy and they're doing it too. Many people are doing it. So we have both monetary, always we've had a monetary situation and a fiscal situation. Iran and Russia have finalized an agreement to trade in their local currencies instead of the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar closed out its worst year since the onset of the pandemic as Wall Street ramped up bets that the Federal Reserve is set to lower interest rates in 2024. In 2024, currency market trends are expected to be significantly influenced by the evolving movements of the U.S. dollar against major and emerging market currencies. Do you believe that alternative currencies or digital currencies could effectively replace the dominance of the U.S. dollar in global markets? Your insights matter. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below. If you found this content helpful, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned for more updates. 
Thank you for being a valuable part of this journey with us.